Velocity. Have a look at these. Do you know what they are? Little pieces of aluminium with holes in the end. They're actually purchased from a gardening store and they're labels for plants. They don't get messed up in the cold, rainy weather. Have you seen those before? Very thin aluminium. Right, here's another type of metal. It's brass. That's called shim brass. And my friendly garage mechanic gave me that. It's worth just a few cents. The labels are worth about 10 cents each. Well, I'm going to slice the end off one of these labels and the other end as well to make a little rectangular strip. And I've already cut a piece of brass exactly the same size. I'll put the two together, one underneath the other, and then with a stapler, I'll make sure that they don't move, don't shift in relation to one another. One, two, and a couple at the other end, three, four staples. There, we have a strip which is made of two metals. In other words, it's a bi-metallic strip, a two-metal strip. What can you do with that? Well, I'm glad you asked. This is what I'm going to do with it. I'll take a drawing pin or a thumbtack and I'll put it through this end and see if I can attach the whole thing to a block of wood. First of all, the thumbtack goes through and because the metals are so thin, it's surprisingly easy to push that thumbtack through and attach the whole bimetallic strip to the end of the block of wood. Now I'll adjust it so that it's poking out horizontally. There we are. What happens to things when they're heated? You know very well in the summer that your feet expand and your shoes feel tight. In fact, most things expand quite significantly when they're heated. What will happen to these two metals? You think they'll expand? Seems a pretty reasonable assumption, doesn't it? Do you think you'll be able to see anything if you watch carefully? What will you see? Will you see them getting longer or something else? Well, let's find out. I'll strike a match and hold it underneath the two metals so that they're both heated. Here we are, and you watch and see what happens. Do you see that? When the flame goes in, the strip actually bends upwards. What does that suggest to you about the amount at which the brass is expanding compared to the amount at which the aluminium is expanding? Well, if it's bending upwards, that would suggest that the one underneath, the brass, is actually expanding more than the aluminium, and the whole thing is going up in that direction. That gives me an idea. Perhaps we could use that as a trigger for an electric fire alarm. What am I talking about? Well, have a look at these two blocks of wood. On your left, I've placed a bicycle buzzer. They cost just two or three dollars at an electrical store. Two wires come out from underneath it. One of them is sticking out there in midair, the red one. The other one goes to a battery. I've taped it to that end. And from the other end of the battery, I've placed another piece of wire and brought that all the way around to the second block and put it underneath the thumbtack that's holding the bimetallic strip in place. Now, the electrical circuit is not complete, but if we should move that block in so that it touches the bare wire, watch and listen. See? <laughs> the, the alarm goes off. But, of course, if it's a real fire alarm, we shouldn't have to wait and move something physically like that. The fire, the flame, the heat should do it itself. So what I'm going to do is to bring that in again and I'll adjust it so that, there we are, so that the strip is touching. Then I'll back it off just a fraction. So now the wire is not quite touching the bimetallic strip. There's a tiny gap between the two. There we are, just not quite touching. What will make it touch? Well, if some source of heat causes the bimetallic strip to bend upwards, maybe it'll trigger off and work as a fire alarm. Let's see if the candle will help us here. Here it goes. Here comes the fire. Let's see if the alarm tells us that the fire is near. Fire goes out, alarm goes off. And each time the flame goes in, the alarm goes off powerfully. And in fact, some real fire alarms work on the same principle. They have a bimetallic strip to trigger off an alarm or a flashing light or a signal that goes to the fire station. So that's a little bit about fire alarms. Yes.